Point and click adventure games have changed a lot since they first came about and there's one game I played recently that I feel has refined the genre to the best it can be. Adventure games have been around for a very long time, almost since the beginning of gaming history. Let's take a brief look at the evolution of adventure games, from Colossal Cave Adventure in 1976, all the way to this year with the recent release of Roki. As I said, this is a brief look, so let me know in the comments if you want me to do a deeper dive into the journey of the genre. We might as well start with Colossal Cave Adventure. A text adventure which involves the player typing in commands like go south or pick up item to explore a cave that is rumoured to be filled with gold. The program acts as a narrator, often giving humorous replies and if it does not understand the player's command then it would ask them to retype it. And that's all there really is to this one. Colossal Cave Adventure is an extremely simple game by today's standards, but we gotta start somewhere right? Less than a decade later, Sierra Online was a titan in the adventure game market and they made the huge leap to using graphical representations on screen as opposed to a wall of text, with one of their biggest and most known titles being King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. Like Colossal Cave Adventure, the player would input commands by typing them out, but here they would see their actions take place as opposed to being told about it. This opened up many possibilities and allowed a more humorous element to be added. Many more games like King's Quest would come from this, especially from Sierra, and the mechanics would stay the same for a few years. Most people would have heard of LucasArts, and the late 80s and 90s are regarded as the golden age for point and click adventure games, and it's easy to see why. Maniac Mansion introduced the Scum Engine, giving players a choice of actions at the bottom of the screen, meaning they don't need to guess which commands can and cannot be used. This made for a much more smoother experience for the player. LucasArts used the Scum Engine for a good few years and refined it through each game to eventually being able to fill the entire screen with the scene and remove the actions from the bottom in favour of a pie menu, as you can see here in the Curse of Monkey Island. This was the final game to use the Scum Engine, and it's one of my favourite games of all time and why I love the genre so much. Taking a big leap forward, we land on Telltale's The Walking Dead. Telltale had some great games before this of course, including Tales of Monkey Island, but it was The Walking Dead that really put them on the map. Telltale games are very on rails and take the term point and click to the extreme. The player is taken through the story and has to click on the spots that appear in the environment to speak to characters or examine or use items that they have just acquired. There's no real inventory system that the players would be familiar with and the vast majority of the genre employs heavily. It's clear that Telltale has had a big part in shaping the point and click adventure games into what they are today and you can see some of the similarities in Roki, along with a lot more exploration. But what is Roki? Roki is a point and click adventure game telling a modern story of the bond between a brother and sister with themes of love, loss and desperation all wrapped up in Scandinavian folklore. It follows the story of Tove as she sets out on a journey to find and rescue her brother Lars from a terrifying beast that has captured him. Along the way Tove meets many different creatures from trolls, croaklings and uh magic mushroom, all who play different parts in helping her get closer to reuniting with Lars. Roki is a wonderful story and Polygon Treehouse has managed to pack a lot in without an extreme amount of dialogue. I wouldn't like to go into too much detail of the story because the game is still pretty new and it's a story driven game after all, however I strongly recommend people play it if they're a fan of point and click adventure games and Scandinavian folklore and mythology. I have to say, Roki is the ideal point and click. I recently decided to get back into learning game development. I tried once before and I wasn't a huge fan of coding, but I'm sucking it up and I'm learning because I have a dream that needs to be realised. And why do I mention this? Well, the idea I have for my first game I'd like to commercially release is a point and click adventure game. Point and click games don't have a lot of wiggle room for innovating mechanics, seeing as they revolve around pointing and clicking, as the name suggests. Despite this, I've been thinking of more modern ways for my game and after playing Roki it seems the folks at Polygon Treehouse are on the same wavelength because Roki is the exact vision I have in my head. I used a controller for my playthrough but it would have been just as easy if not easier with a mouse. The controls have been streamlined which helps prevent the player from running around like a headless chicken, a problem that was common in older titles. For example, an item that can be picked up will be picked up when clicked on and other interactable objects will just allow the player to examine them. This means the player doesn't have to cycle through actions over each object to find out what can be picked up and what can't. On top of that, to get more information about an item that you have picked up, the player needs simply click on it once in the inventory and Tove will say what she sees. Holding down when clicking an item in the inventory and dragging it over to another item or object in the environment will combine or use them. Other creatures and characters allow the player to speak to them with a single click and if they need an item then, as I mentioned, click and drag said item. 
Many older point and click adventure games had an issue where the player would get stuck and end up trying to click every pixel on the screen just to get an inch of progression. Roki solves that issue by allowing the player to press in the left analog stick and highlight all interactable objects on the screen for a second. Using this was a huge help and I don't think it makes the game any easier, I see it more as a quality of life improvement on the genre. Telltale's Walking Dead games are usually praised for bringing new life to point and click adventure games, but I feel like the gameplay is very basic and scratches the surface when compared to other games in the genre, and that goes for the rest of Telltale's catalogue too. Exploration falls to the wayside, which means the player doesn't get a deeper look at the world. That's not to say Telltale did a terrible job, because they didn't. Their games lean heavily into the narrative and earned many new fans to the genre, so credit where credit is due, but as someone who grew up playing games like Monkey Island, I felt more could be done. I highly recommend checking out Roki. It's about a 7 hour experience, so it's well worth the £20 slash dollars. And if you're a fan of some of the old school point and clicks, check out the video on screen now about how they look years ahead of their time with pre-rendered backgrounds. Please leave a like if you found this video interesting, and subscribe for more videos on game design. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.